Hi guys, this is Charles, I'm one of the surf paws. Today we're doing a total ear canal ablation in a dog um, that presented with a history of uh, facial nerve palsy on the left hand side. So this is the left side of the dog. Zygomatic arch is sitting here, the eye is right there. Um, facial palsy and chronic ear canal disease. And we did a CT scan and there is just so much calcification and dilation of that bulla. Um, I'm sorry that I could not connect to my computer in order to let you see the CT scan. Um, I'm missing the cable. I think the cable is at home. Um, but uh, it's one of the worst I've seen. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what we find in there. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel. Make sure you turn on notifications so that you'll get a ding on your phone the next time we live stream. We do have the live chat going. And so if you have questions, feel free to ask them. Hope everybody is safe out there in isolation or at work or whatever you're doing. Can I get um, Gelpies, please? Um, so somebody from Delhi, uh, somebody from Georgia. Threes, I think they're on the, they, or are they not on the back table there? Thank you. So I'm just incising right over the vertical ear canal. Uh, and I can feel, so the end of the zygomatic arch is here. Getting a little bit light, Demi. Thank you. adjust our depth of anesthetic. Really gross little ears. Northern California. At work right now, staying safe as possible. So Georgia would be about nine o'clock at night. No, eight o'clock, seven o'clock, no, 11 o'clock at night there, 11 p.m. Just finished daylight savings time in Australia and just started it in America. Yes, please. All right, and then we will make a circumferential incision around the opening of the ear canal here. Can I have you try to invert that ear for me? Thank you. And really try to turn it inside out, so dig your fingers up underneath there. Yeah, great, thank you. I've done a, a few total ear canal ablations on this channel before, so you guys would have probably seen them, but for the newbies, I'll explain what I'm doing here. So it's absolutely critical to stay right on that cartilage of the ear canal to avoid hitting the facial nerve. Now, in this dog, I have the luxury that it already has facial nerve palsy, so we won't know whether it was my fault or whether it was just the disease. Uh, I'm not sure if this is going to recover or not. Given the severity of the Bula disease, um, I would not be surprised if this dog never recovered facial nerve function, which is not a big deal, um, as long as it's not a brachycephalic dog. Shouldn't have an issue with exposure keratitis. So just coming around the outside here. Can you repeat the question? Does the anesthesia care provider come from vet school food? Does the anesthesia care provider come from vet school? So, so the um, uh, we have a nurse anesthetist 
on the more uh, critical cases, we get a, um, a critical care vet in here as well. In fact, going on next door um, is a cat who was attacked by three Rottweilers, sadly, and has skull fractures, but also has a hernia, um, abdominal hernia, so that's being repaired right next door to us right now. And, and we do have uh, a critical care vet who's running the anesthetic on that patient. Uh, so the reflex is direct muscle stimulation. It's not that they can feel it. Uh, so it's not the depth of the anesthetic um, that's the issue. Um, and I get that question often um, on this channel. Um, so it's not that they can feel it, rest assured. So we've already discussed the most common complication that we see with total ear canal ablations, and that is um, facial. Um, that happens if you leave any secretory material in the uh, bulla. Uh, vestibular signs, if you go too far dorsal in the bulla. Hemorrhage, if you go too far rostral, when you're doing your dissection at the level of the bulla the internal carotid or a branch of the internal carotid comes out right there. And I'm happy to use electric cautery to dissect off the auricular cartilage until I get to the junction between the horizontal and vertical ear canals. And then I switch to uh, scissors or Fourier elevator or whatever, but I try to put the cautery away. So this dog got a pre-med with ace promazine and um, uh, butorphanol and then had a dose of atropine because it was very bradycardic. And then um, it's on uh, fentanyl, fentanyl CRI right now. And it's... Uh, uh, on isoflurane as well. So I'm just working my way so kind of circumferentially around the ear canal. Just staying as close as I can to that auricular cartilage. Well, yeah. Sorry, what, what? So our nurses go um, to tech school. So they have, um, in Australia, it's called a CERT 4 in vet nursing. Um, most of our nurses have that. If they don't have it, they're going through it for the most part. Um, and that's, how many years is that, Demi? Uh, so I actually done my degree in the UK. Four years? Yeah. So De the, our anest nurse anesthetist today did her degree in the UK and has a four-year vet nursing. Or is it a vet tech degree or vet nursing? Uh, vet nursing is a BSc honors degree. Uh, BSc honors degree. So we're very privileged to have Demi working with us today. Um, I have not used local nerve blocks, but we will, before we leave, we'll be doing a local block with Mepivacaine.
getting close to the horizontal air canal now, and I'm have to be careful. The deeper I go, I have to be really careful with putting my gelpies in because of potential damage to the facial nerve. that caudally. Um, so somebody asked if the bradycardia was called, caused by the isopromazine, but this dog was already bradycardic before we anesthetized it. And this dog has a history of having a reaction or a complication with a previous anesthetic. I think it might have either sensitivity to opiates, well, we, which we think it does, but also possibly just an um, inherent bradycardia. I thought it had a third degree heart block when I was looking at the ECG. It turned out that it was just a very severe sinus bradycardia. So we're on the auricular cartilage here. Uh, when I see it, I will zoom it in. I haven't seen the facial nerve yet. And we might not see it because it might be completely encapsulated by the soft tissue that's surrounding this ear canal. the facial nerve will be exiting right about here, right at the stylomastoid frame and just caudal to the opening in the bulla. Let me pull that down for me, please. Thank you. I'll elevate that up like that. Uh, the whole process from induction, we'd like to see how we intubate the patient. Yep, I can do that, obviously not on this patient, but in the future, that's something we can think about. I'll let Demi be in charge of that. <laughs> So the big ones are, the, the big one is the branch of the internal carotid artery, which comes out just rostral to the tympanic bulla, comes out right about here. That's the most important one that we're really concerned about. Um, and I have heard of dogs bleeding to death during a total ear canal ablation from that vessel. Um, that's really the main one that we're worried about. They're the marginal vessels on uh, cranially and caudally or crani uh, rostrally and caudally on the pinna as well, that if you damage those, you can get necrosis of the pinna. You're pretty close to the maxillary vein up here. Let's pull caudally on that one, thank you. Yeah. So I'm just being really careful to stay right on that auricular cartilage there. And 
Uh, CBLO for cruciate disease, I assume that's what you're talking about. Um, I've never done one. I think that they are um, appropriate for certain cases. And I think that the sur our, our orthopedic surgeons here um, that do a lot more of the stifle surgery than I do, um, do about 95% TPLOs and about 5% CBLOs. And it just comes down to uh, case selection. So I think it's a completely appropriate surgery in the right cases. So I'm down to the bulla mm -hmm. caudally. Bring that back here. So I'm down to the bulla there. Just hold on to that, just like that, thank you. Very deep hole in this dog. I have not seen the facial nerve yet, which is good. At least not in cross section. And now I'm amputating or transecting, I'll have to get my mayos out, transecting the external ear canal right at the opening to the tympanic bulla. There's a question as to why I'm doing this surgery. It's because of chronic ear canal disease, facial nerve palsy, recurrent ear canal infections. Okay, so that's out there and I still cannot see the facial nerve, that's okay. All right. try to see if I can move camera over a little bit. Sorry guys, bit of a roller coaster ride here. And then I'll zoom in. Uh, just, um, Demi, if you can tell me if my head's in the way. All right, so that's the opening to the bulla right there. And I'm going to take a freer elevator, try to expose the bone ventral to the bulla. The idea being that I'm going to get, so I can feel the bone there. So I'm going to get my um, rongeurs. Can I get, uh, do I have a neuro kit or anything? 
Thanks. So I'm going to get one blade of my rongeur down into the bulla. Uh, the big ones, yeah. Uh, can I get some medium rongeurs, please? So ruskins, but the, ruskins, but that are a bit smaller than those. A little bit shaky, I haven't had lunch yet. With bilateral total ear canal ablations, um, I think that they can hear a little bit, usually loud noises and vibrations and stuff, they can't hear normally. All right, so I'm putting one blade in the bullet and the other one ventral. Um, so on my dissection, I go down to the tympanic membrane. And then once we get, once we do the amputation of the ear canal, then I have to take out the whole ventral aspect of the bulla. And the more you take out, the better, because what we're trying to do is we're trying to make sure that we're getting every bit of soft tissue out of the inside of the tympanic bulla. Um, so I would base it based on culture and I will be honest with you, I don't manage these medically. They're always managed by somebody else and then I just kind of come in and do the salvage procedure. And so um, I know that a lot of these would be on anaphloxacin and uh, that's blocked, that Exidae has blocked the suction tip. So that's nice that we've gotten some out of there. I'm just unclogging the suction tip now. Uh, the dog will not go home on antibiotics. I will do a culture now, though. Sorry that you guys can't see what's going on down here. Can you grab that culture up, please, Jess? Yeah. Uh, and I will, there's a question as to whether I'll place a drain. I will not place a drain in this, but I hardly place a drain in anything. So look at all that exudate that I just got out. That's awesome. There you go. Thank you. Um, can I get an osteotomin mallet, please? Uh, let's see what you got. Uh, I'll take that one. We'll go with the big guns. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to use the osteotome and mallet to break away the ventral portion of the bulla so that I can get my rongeurs in there.
Okay. Yeah. Just from the external, do you feel, do you feel that big um, three centimeter mass there? Yeah, yeah. Just from the, the middle? Mm -hmm. And then if you want to take a little one from the edge. Yep, thank you. Yeah. What do you need? Okay. Um, I think the use of a burr is great if you need it. In this one, I don't need it. Like what? The time that you that that's really helpful is when you can't get into the bulla. About to take out a big chunk of something. Uh, somebody else has asked, have you ever thought about using kerosene ranges? Um, I have kerosene at the table. Um, the problem that I have with the kerosene is that the that the cut is kind of pointing in the wrong, wrong direction. Kerosens are best for cutting bone that's kind of horizontal. And the bone that I'm trying to cut here is kind of vertical. Nice big chunk of bone there. Revolting in there. What's that? Yeah. No, it's all good. A little bit of necrotic tissue, or? I think so, yeah. Um, so we're going to have to trim out that necrotic, necrotic tissue. Mm -hmm. And sorry, guys, I'm just looking at some photos on another patient. Probably have to admit it, trim that out, and then rebandage it and let it heal by second intention. Uh, so, JL has asked if there are any good methods to make sure you have loose all the inflammatory and secretory tissue. I'll be um, So, the key is just to be really. Um, meticulous and spend a lot of time looking in because I can see the inside of the bullet here so I'm just spending a lot of time making sure that the bullet is completely clean before I give up I think that that's the problem that people run into is that they give up prematurely and stop cleaning so you really have to take your time Right. Um, so yeah, you could use an arthroscopic shaver debrider. It's not something that I've used in this situation, but just such a deep hole here.
Another bit of lining. Uh, nope. The Heine loops, I think, are the best ones out there. They're also, unfortunately, the most expensive. They're about four and a half thousand Australian, but they just make such a difference in your ability to see everything. I know that there's some cheaper ones out there, but I have never found a set of loops that I'm actually comfortable with wearing. Um, usually with, when I used to wear other loops, I'd wear them for about 10 minutes in the surgery and then give up and take them out because they were so uncomfortable and I couldn't see and I was getting a headache and stuff. Whereas, look at that. Where there's wow. with, um, with Heine loops that are on my head with a headband. Um, I'm just so comfortable and it's so natural uh, feeling. Um, this is a Staffordshire Terrier, about uh, 10 years old, I think. What I've done in some occasions is gone in with an arthroscope and introduced it into the bullet and make sure that I'm getting everything out. Sorry, you guys can't see in here, but frankly, I can't see very well either, so. Now there's a nice big chunk here. Where's my... Look at that. Nice big chunk there. What is being suctioned from the So a lot of exudate is being suctioned out. So basically, uh, ceruminous material like earwax. I'm really taking my time here to make sure I get it all out. Go back in with my pick. I'm staying away from the dorsal surface so I don't get the vestibular apparatus.
Now I finished. Do you see my um, curette? Yeah. That one. Yeah. Yeah. Can you let um, Tegan know that I'm nearly finished? Yeah, I just found a bunch more stuff up here. Well, this is the Yeah. Um, I have, it's a pretty small, basic soft tissue sarcoma. I don't think it'll be very interesting. Just on the metacarpal area of a dog. Just depends on whether um, I'm coming back in this surgery theater. Uh-oh. We've got possibly the biggest chunk yet. Look at that. Glad we kept going. That would have caused a problem. Yeah. No, I, I have to leave at 4.15, though. I'm happy to do it, but is it already um, in the CT? No, it's um, great. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. What time is it? Quarter to two. Um, I'm, that's, thank you. Said what? Hi from Oregon. Oregon, nice. All right, so that's pretty much it. Can we get some epivacane, please? That was a challenging little total ear can ablation. I'll be honest, I don't love them at the best of times. <laughs> they are a challenging little surgery, a frustrating. So we're just injecting mepivacaine. Hi from Jamaica. Thank you. So we're just injecting the pivacaine. Okay, and I'll take some three OPDS, please.
That was a frustrating little surgery. Grab the scissors, please. Sure. Yep. I don't want to go too far deep with my suture because I don't want to pick up the facial nerve. Uh, we don't have a pharmacist at our vet hospital. Some of the big hospitals, particularly vet schools, would have a pharmacist. Um, so my next case, I think, is going to be a, a hemilaminectomy and a dachshund. Are you guys interested in watching that, or have you seen too many of them? Just let me know by response if... Um, if um, you're interested in watching a hemilaminectomy in a dachshund. Um, regarding a pharmacist, I think pharmacy would be probably a four-year degree. Um, in Australia, I think it's probably more like um, four years of undergraduate and then probably four years of graduate in the US. In Australia, it might be four or five years by itself. Okay, all right. Well, if I can come back into this suite, which I guess I don't have any choice because all the other suites are taken, I will live stream it. Someone said they're interested in that work with nothing to do. Mm -hmm. Be like. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just wear a GoPro on my head. <laughs> yeah. So I have to get some sticky tape. I'm going to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely have to eat something between this surgery and the next. Mm I don't really even know what a vlog is. No, it's a video log, but yeah. what what do you like what do you do? I think a lot of YouTubers do it. It's basically just following them around in their daily right. life. Yeah. Often some of them are unedited, so it's real raw. Right. <laughs> kind of um yeah. like reality TV. Yeah, exactly. All right. A day in the life of yeah, exactly right. An intern book would be very interesting. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> We've had a, I put a GoPro on the corner and just took a photo about every 15 seconds all day and then made a video of it. Oh, okay. That was really cool. Time lapse. Yeah.
Um, just once I finish this part of the incision, are you happy to do intradermal on the vertical part? Yeah. Jess is our intern today. She's going to take over in a minute. Jess is a world famous country western singer. <laughs> In a past time. In a past life. <laughs> so, how many of you would like to see Jess perform? Oh <laughs> <laughs> well, <she's... laughs> Jess is a lovely guitarist and singer. <laughs> That'd be kind of so this surgery was about four thousand oh no with the CT about fifty two hundred um, Australian which is about probably four thousand maybe three thousand five hundred US <laughs> I don't think we're going to get just the no. same right now. <laughs> Maybe if I start my own YouTube channel, I'll give you the link <laughs> in one surgery. <laughs> no, I think we need to have you singing in the corner. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the live stream now. So thank you, everybody, for watching. I will probably be cutting that spine in about, I would imagine it'll be in about an hour or something like that, 45 minutes to an hour, so stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Make sure you turn on notifications, and we will see you next time. Thanks for watching. I'm going to go ahead and end that.